Okay, welcome back. You know, most homeowners will be very concerned about termites, and we've, we've covered that, but a lot of homeowners are, are very concerned about ants, too. As a matter of fact, I did some research, and among the home inspection-related subjects that people are most concerned about, you know, I really expected somebody to say, well, I'm concerned about radon or asbestos or spiders or mice or whatever, but it turned out that uh, one of the most popular subjects and home inspection was how do I control ants. So we're gonna give you uh, a lot of that background in, in these next segments. I guess we should probably start by identifying the kinds of ants that there are here. And these are, we're gonna basically just cover the ones that are generally found throughout the United States. Um, there are some particular kinds of ants that only live, for example, in Florida, or uh, that's more detail than I wanna go into. But you've got the carpenter ant and um, they live in wood. They can actually cause damage to the house, not nearly to the extent as termites. Termites are eating the wood. The carpenter ant is chewing the wood out so that they can have a colony there. So they do cause damage, but it's not as much. Carpenter, of course, is a biggie, a bigger ant. And you got the crazy ant. That's the one that just kind of buzzes around. It looks like it's on some sort of a drug, but doesn't seem to really have any direction that it's going. It's just kind of moving around. Uh, you've got the odorous ant and the pavement ant. Again, the pavement ant is usually found outside. You've got the red fire ants. I have a story where my son-in-law was out uh, in my backyard in this area between uh, my house and a golf course. It's kind of that out-of-bounds rough that the golf course does. And he was out there looking for golf balls, and he didn't know it, but he just happened to be standing on a red fire ant colony and he got bit and he was one sore puppy for a little over a week. So the kinds of, those are the general, you know, bigger categories of species of ants that you might find. Now, if you think of yourself as an ant and you're a member of one of these colonies, your goal is to be looking for food. You're not trying to chew the house down. You're not trying to do anything malevolent from your point of view. You just want to feed the colony. So if you're that scout ant, you're going to be going out in whatever radius and you're looking for food. And if it just so happens that uh, you find food on what turns out to be a kitchen floor, then that works for you. Now I'm going to tell on myself in this case, um, as about a seven year old, uh, we had ants in what we called the, uh, the little bathroom. And it was just a half bath and just had a sink and a toilet. And over here there was this little cabinet that had a square foot or two of surface space. And I was always seeing ants on that. So as a seven-year-old, I figured that my role now was to kill those ants. So at first I would, you know, just squish them. And I'd, I'd get a lot of those and I'd stay in that little bathroom and sit there and figure that I was doing the family a favor by squishing these ants. I thought I was killing off the colony. And then I started to realize that if I dropped water on them, they didn't like it, but they could get out and escape. And then I, as I was you know, turning into more of the evil scientist experimenter that I am now, I started to realize that if you drop soapy water on them, then they die immediately. And then I thought, okay, so I'm going to kill a whole bunch of ants and I'm going to put a uh, little piece of bread on the center of this and then I'm going to surround them with the soapy water. I had noticed that if you surround an ant with it, you're trapped with soapy water, then eventually he crawls through it and dies. And so I thought, all right, I'm gonna build a long-term solution. So the ring that I did had one opening so that they would walk in, get the bread, and walk out through the soapy water and die. And I guess they were smarter than that. They walked out the way they came in, and they didn't die. And all of this scientific experimenting I was doing as a seven-year-old, um, obviously it's kind of juvenile, and it's not going to really affect anything. But in a way, it's kind of reflective of how we as even adults treat ants. Uh, in many cases, what we do is no more effective than what I was trying to do as a seven-year-old. For example, if we have crumbs or pizza or graham crackers or Cheerios on the floor, the ants are going to find that, and we can try and eliminate that problem by maybe sealing, uh, by caulking over here. 
And that doesn't work because then the ants are still going to know that there's Cheerios over there. So they're just going to find some other pathway in, maybe behind the cabinet, maybe behind the fridge, whatever that is. As the seven-year-old, I was killing one or two or even dozens of ants and hoping that over time I could kill hundreds. Poisoning will kill hundreds, but it still doesn't get the queen. So the, uh, the result needs to be that the queen and the entire colony goes away as opposed to killing individual ants.